With the release of her new Netflix documentary, along with her recently published new memoir, we now know more about this iconic 1990s international sex symbol than we ever have. And as you're about to discover, there is certainly more than meets the eye. Here are the top 10 things you didn't know about Pamela Anderson. Number 10. From the day she was born in Ladysmith, British Columbia, it was as though she was destined to be a star. This is because Anderson was born on July 1st, 1967, marking the 100th anniversary of Canada's official founding via the Constitution Act of 1867, garnering her instant media coverage as a centennial baby. The daughter of a furnace repairman and a waitress, who knew that this baby would go on to become a huge world famous star? Number nine. Despite her ceremonious birth, Anderson's early life was far from picture perfect, as she has endured sexual abuse on several occasions growing up. Starting at the age of just six years old, Anderson was molested by her female babysitter for four years until the age of 10. Little Pamela was eventually so distraught that she wished death upon her babysitter. Incredibly, the babysitter soon thereafter died in a car accident. Two years later, at the age of 12, Anderson was raped by a 25-year-old. I was in shock, she wrote in her memoir, falling apart, molecules, dust, liquid, my life evaporating. I thought I was bad and I was ashamed. It hurt me a lot keeping this secret. And it didn't stop there. Anderson also revealed that my first boyfriend in grade nine decided it would be funny to gang rape me with six of his friends. Number eight. In 1988, at the age of 21, Anderson left Vancouver Island where she grew up and moved to Vancouver where she worked as a fitness instructor. The next year, her life suddenly changed when she attended a BC Lions Canadian Football League game. As fate would have it, Anderson was featured on the Jumbotron while wearing a Labatt beer t-shirt. Shortly afterwards, the brewing company reached out to Anderson and hired her as a spokesmodel, and this led to her receiving newfound exposure as the Blue Zone Girl. Number 7. Promoting Labatt put Anderson on Playboy's radar, and they soon flew her down to LA for a photo shoot which landed her on the cover of the magazine's October 1989 issue. Anderson had no plans on moving to Los Angeles, but after Playboy suggested she relocate to California to better position herself for additional opportunities, she decided to make the move, and was soon named Playmate of the Month in February of 1990. To this day, Anderson still holds the record for most Playboy cover appearances. Number 6. After moving to Los Angeles, Anderson won a minor role as Lisa, the original Tool Time Girl, on the hit comedy series Home Improvement. In her memoir, Anderson wrote that the show's star actor, Tim Allen, actually flashed her on their first day of filming. I walked out of my dressing room and Tim was in the hallway in his robe. He opened his robe and flashed me quickly, completely naked underneath. He said it was only fair because he had seen me naked. After two seasons on Home Improvement, Anderson landed the role of CJ Parker on Baywatch, which she played for five seasons between 1992 and 1997, making her one of the show's longest serving cast members. This was the role that would lead to Anderson becoming an international phenomenon, even though she was only paid $1,500 per episode during the first season. But by her fifth season on the show, Anderson was paid over $300,000 an episode, making her one of the highest paid TV actresses at the time. Number five. Pamela Anderson had met Tommy Lee briefly on New Year's Eve in 1994, but she still hardly knew him two months later when she said, I do, and agreed to marry him. After their initial meeting, Lee persistently called Anderson and ultimately tracked her all the way to Cancun, Mexico, where she had traveled for a photo shoot. Anderson was put off by his persistence and refused to disclose where she was staying. But after he said that he would go to every hotel in the area until he found her, she finally agreed to meet him. That night, during ecstasy-laced drunkenness, they hit it off, 
and three days into the trip, Anderson agreed to marry Lee, and they tied the knot the next day during a beachside ceremony on February 19, 1995. Number 4. You undoubtedly know about the infamous sex tape that took the world by storm. But what you may not know is that even though this tape went on to generate over $77 million in just one year, Anderson and Lee never earned a penny from it. This tape was not a publicity stunt and was in fact stolen by a disgruntled former employee from a safe at Anderson and Lee's home. They filed a lawsuit against the company distributing the tape, but ultimately dropped it because the legal process was causing Anderson an overwhelming amount of anxiety and since she was pregnant, she feared for the health of her unborn child. Number 3. The stolen sex tape was far from the only problem in Anderson's marriage, and her husband's jealousy soon proved to be a major point of contention. Tommy Lee was almost always present when Anderson was filming, and her romantic Baywatch scenes with other men sent him into wild fits of rage. One evening, Confused, sad, tired, not in my right mind, Anderson climbed into the bathtub and washed down a bottle of Advil with vodka before vomiting. The previous day, Lee had crashed his car into a trailer on the Baywatch set, she writes, punched the cabinets out in the makeup room, and thrown me in his car, driving off the set, tires spinning. He left her at their condo, where she cried all night. I couldn't take it anymore, and I didn't know what to do. It was a depth of despair I'd never felt, and I'd been through a lot. Number two. Despite her notoriety as a blonde bombshell, Anderson is actually an intellectual and an avid writer, having now released three autobiographies and four novels. She is also a huge supporter of the founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, who she hails as a hero and a proponent of transparency and truth. Anderson has visited Assange at Ecuador's London Embassy on multiple occasions, and even visited him when he was transferred to Belmarsh, which is a super maximum security prison. Number 1. Pamela Anderson, who has been married six times, has now come to the conclusion that Tommy Lee was her one true love. In fact, Anderson allegedly texted her ex-husband before her Netflix documentary aired in an attempt to clear the air and make him aware of her true feelings. She apparently told him that the paparazzi were to blame for the end of the relationship. Meanwhile, a source close to Lee claims that he and his wife, Brittany Furlan, believe Anderson is trying to get back with him, even though she's been presenting herself as respectful of his current marriage. Anderson has apparently been repeatedly texting Lee ever since he proposed to Furlan, with flirty messages saying she still loves him and she thinks they'll end up together when they're old. For Lee's part, he apparently doesn't reply to the texts. Allegedly, Anderson's most recent text to Lee stated that she was heartbroken over their divorce and apologized for hurting him, reading, I only have good things to say about you. Especially in hindsight, I realize I only had one true love. It's a true love story. Now, even though Baywatch was a huge hit, Anderson's first feature film, Barbed Wire, was a flop. But that is not the case for the movie stars featured in this video right here, the top 10 richest actors in the world. Click the image right now and you can watch it completely free.